Hello and welcome to The Watches TV. In the last report, we introduced the chronograph. In this present report, we continue exploring this fascinating but underrated complication by going more into details. We'll see how it works and what are the main features of it, technically speaking. The chronograph was created to measure periods of time on demon, as a horse race for instance, or the motion of a star in the sky. Naturally, foremost in importance is how to control the function. The first chronographs had one single pusher who was placed either in the crown or next to it. This configuration, still in existence today, is appreciated by connoisseurs who consider it as the most refined type of chronograph. The monopusher chronograph implies a higher level of technical skills because of the delicacy of its control system, which is fully located in the same place as the button. At the beginning of the 20th century, watchmakers introduced a second pusher for the chronograph's reset function. Technically speaking, this simplified the manufacture of the movement and added to its reliability. It also allowed the chronograph to be restarted again without having to reset it first. A second button also allowed to avoid operational confusion. At the same time, watchmakers worked on significantly increasing the frequency of the chronograph movement. Indeed, the frequency expressed in hertz or beats per hour is a major factor influencing precision, and a good example is a micrograph created by Charles Auguste earlier in 1916. This is a chronograph boasting precision at one hundredth of a second while beating at a frequency of 10 Hz or 22,000 beats per hour. The operation system is crucial in a chronograph because it controls the link between the pushers and the function. In other words, it is the chronograph's brain. The simplest one uses cams, parts produced to adapt and transmit information. A complex version of that is the cannon wheel, which is very appreciated by connoisseurs above all because it improves the precision of the operation system, while at the same time decreasing the risk of failure. The column wheel, which centrally drives all the levers, also boasts a beautiful and unusual shape. Another reason why connoisseurs also appreciate the column wheel is because it is a part, at least in days gone by, difficult to manufacture. The chronograph is one of the two most demanding complications that work on demand, as opposed to continuously. Like the other on-demand complication, the minute repeater which rings the time, the chronograph must be started and stopped. This means, in a technical sense, that all the components belonging to the function are by default inactive. They begin working once connected to the main movement, which delivers the energy. This occurs when the user pushes the start-stop button. At this moment, a connection is made between the two entities thanks to a so-called clutch. Throughout time, watchmakers have developed two different kinds of clutches to activate the chronograph. The horizontal clutch is characterized by a wheel moving laterally to make contact with another one that belongs to the movement, while the vertical clutch's components are positioned on one axis, including a disc controlled by a circular spring. In the vertical clutch, the function starts when the movable disc is pushed against the second wheel of the movement. It is released by a control system made of two levers and the circular spring that maintains the pressure against the movement's wheel. To stop it, the control system pushes back the disc to interrupt the connection. And finally, just remember that the reaction time of a human is of 0.3 seconds, so this is the time you need to start and stop the chronograph. See you!